Okay, so so I've been using the the Microsoft translation engine to be able to convert uh, typically English into different languages. So I can see here uh, if we just roll les conflits de la famille. Uh, you can see that uh, in real time it goes and calls up the uh, Microsoft translation engine. Les rapports négatifs. And we'll do a, a translation here. Les adverbes. Okay, and so along with that, uh, we can convert uh, into text. So we'll just find a little program here. Okay, so I can convert from English into French. Salut. Into German. Hello. Into Spanish. Hola. Okay, so what you should hear is that the actual uh, the voice is, is is pretty good, it's pretty close to, to a, a native speaker. But what happened was that uh, Microsoft had their their translation engine with inside their data market, but they've now moved into the an Azure infrastructure. So the, the code itself online isn't great in terms of, uh, of documenting how you go about uh, setting up the new service which went offline recently uh, in the Azure cloud. So what you actually do is you go to the, the Cognitive engine and you create a new Cognit, Cognitive service. Okay, so once you create your your service, the the language uh, translation service, then you should find that it, that appears with inside Azure, and then on Azure, uh, you are allocated a key. So it changed it changed to how it operated before, but uh, when you create your translator text API, so for both the speech and the text, and this is one thing I found out that you actually uh, have the same service. So there's no need for two different services for the speech and also for the translator of text. So once you've created your service, I've got mine as a pay as you go, and then you should end up with two keys. So what you do is you copy the first key uh, or the second key into your application. So I'll show you how you test, and it took me a while to actually get this uh, working. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use this uh, Postman, a really great app for testing uh, web services. So the token itself is generated with inside the Azure Cloud uh, using a post. So we're going to call up this uh, URI. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the key that we generated before from the service and we're going to pass it in as an HTTP post parameter of OCP add pin subscription key. Okay, so the key that you've got sits in here. The token itself will stay alive for about 10 minutes. Uh, so we should be able to, to go ahead and post. So this one here I've generated will have, would have timed out. So we'll just go ahead and we'll generate another one. I got a little bit confused because it looks a bit the same at the start, but actually, if you watch at the end there, you'll see it, it's actually changing. Okay, so this is now our token for for ten minutes. So to do a translation, I found uh, it was pretty much the same as as the old syntax. So it was pretty easy to get this one to work. Uh, it's just this URL here. We're passing in through a get of uh, of uh, the text that we want to translate, so in this case from English to Spanish. And then we create a key uh, as a parameter that's uh, that's going in as for the get called authorization, and then from there we then we then type the word bearer and then a space and then paste in our our token that we've just received. Okay, so let's go for goodbye. Uh, 
from there. Okay, so we're going to test that. And everything works fine. So the adios. And we'll try it to French. And that's uh, That works. And German. And be design and everything's perfect. Okay, so I found that one was quite easy to get uh, working. It was the actual conversion of uh, uh, text to uh, audio that I found quite difficult to to to, to get to get going. Uh, so with this one, we have a, a get also, and what we'll do is we'll just paste in our token again to make sure it, it works. Okay, so text, we're going to use this uh, web service, speak, from this URL. So we're going to take uh, welcome, and the language is English, format is a WAV file, and we want the best quality possible. So now if we will say, um, well, again, we'll say goodbye just to make sure that it, that it does it for us. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, so it, uh, that, Goodbye. that works. Okay, so those are the two main web services that you use. So the token should, should stay alive for about 10 minutes or so. So I'm just going to show you the, uh, the setup within, uh, the, the, within a C-sharp program. Okay, so I have a little method here called uh, get, get token. So I've given the code there, but uh, th this method here will take in our subscription key that we generated, key one or key two, and actually create our token. Okay, so I have a get token method. I put in my subscription key that we saw before. I call up that method, so the code that I should have given you the code, and then the get access token will add on the the bearer part at the start, and then add on the the rest of the token. So once we have the token, it should stay alive for uh, at least for around uh, ten ten minutes. Okay, so uh, with inside the code. Just let me find my methods that I've created it's inside our code. Uh, you can see I'm calling up this uh, translate method. From there, I would have got that I get the token. I pass it in here with some parameters. Then go ahead and I can do my my normal uh, call for our, our request. So if you remember, this is for this one here which is a get. Okay, we do a get and we read the response back and it should give us the translation. So in this case, we're going from uh, goodbye to a VDSM and our parameters that we set up will be passed into here, to and from. Then for the other one, and this was the one that I had most problems with, I don't think the documentation was really that, that great. So in this one, uh, we're also doing a get. I think this is where it changed the last time. It was a post. And uh, so in this, this time, we do a get again. And we pass our parameters in there. So sometimes if it's an MP3 file, we've got to do our, our URL encode because of the slash symbol there needs to be encoded into something like percent something. I do my response. And then I open up a... I open up a... Uh, a, a connection and I download the file and put it into my mp3 file and then I can uh, read it back uh, again. Okay, so that's that's the setup. I highly re recommend this this program here. It's just fantastic. You can keep all your all your responses and so on and uh, and you can really test your web service and make sure everything is, is running okay. OK, so that's how you use the Microsoft Translation uh, Engine.